it's Acacia and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be making one of my all-time favorite family meals. Um, I cook this once a week, um, every Sunday. It is my leftovers, leftovers vegan soup. I make this soup every Sunday, like I said, when I've used up basically all of our groceries, I've gone through every meal I had to make, and I have all of these leftover vegetables that are about to go bad and I don't want to waste them. So this soup is 99% vegetables. Okay, that's not true. 80% vegetables. Uh, I made it for my non-vegan, both of my non-vegan parents. They both love it. It's so good. Also, this is a made-up recipe. I'm just kind of like, I winged it the first time. And so I don't really know the exact measurements. I kind of just like look at it and see what I need. But I'll try to give you guys as many like exact measurements as I like possibly can. We'll figure it out together. But I have all my vegetables here. My first step always, well, first step is to wash your hands, which I did. Second step is to wash your vegetables. Third step is to uh, cut up your vegetables. So right now we're going to cut up my vegetables. I'm also going to start preheating my oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's do that. Okay, I don't have an onion, and this recipe usually starts with an onion. We got carrots, which are literally so close to going bad, like they're a little bendy, but they still snap. We got two bell peppers, a green and a red, and this one has a baby bell pepper inside, listen. It's pregnant. Zucchini, broccoli, cauliflower, celery, and usually white onion that we don't have. going bad because I bought this cauliflower today I do buy cauliflower from like a health food store so like it's like super organic and uh, natural so it might not last as long as like I don't know regular cauliflower I think that's how that works it starts to brown a lot quicker but you can still eat cauliflower as it's going bad not once it's bad um, but I bought this cauliflower today and if you can see here, these like brown dots. So that's like when it like starts to get bad, like these dots right here. And like I said, I bought this cauliflower today. So it's like, it's super normal. Um, I just go like this and just like cut it off until I can't see brown anymore. If it's like so little throughout your cauliflower, you can just not use you know, the florets that have brown on them. If that's like what you're about, that's fine. Okay guys, here are all of my veggies. These are just the ones that are getting baked because we still have the bell peppers and the cel celery, and then usually the white onion. But these ones are the ones that get baked in the oven. I have my avocado oil here. And then I'm just gonna lather these up with some oil. And then just roll them around like so. And now they're ready to go in the oven. That's a lot of veggies. In they go. I would say maybe 15 minutes. <laughs> I usually put them in there and then I start chopping my other vegetables and then I start to like, you know, uh, saute those vegetables. And then by that time I put the other vegetables in. So I'd say 15 minutes maybe. You can kind of tell because the broccoli starts to get like brown on top, like baked looking. And that's usually about the time. 
I think I take them out. <laughs> Open my red bell pepper. And I found my baby pepper inside. How sweet. Okay, so I'm about to start my sauteing. I'm gonna check on my vegetables. They're pretty close to done. Whoa. My camera. If you can see it, like the broccoli is like a little black on some of them, but we got a little bit longer to go. So we're gonna start sauteing. I'm using my extra virgin olive oil. You could also just use the olive, or the avocado oil. Um, and then, about this much oil. And then here, my here's my celery and bell pepper. And like I said a million times, this usually would have white onion first, and then I'd put these in. But I don't have my white onion, so these are going in. Turn my burner on high. Well, not super high, but close. My bell peppers and celery are sautéing. Probably gonna saute them for like five more minutes and then add garlic and maybe some onion powder. But my vegetables in the oven are all done. Nice and brown. So we're gonna take those out. Okay, so my base has softened a little bit. So now I'm gonna add some garlic. Look at this giant thing of garlic that we get from Costco. It's like one of the only things we buy from Costco but we use a lot of garlic in this family, so needed. So now I'm going to season the vegetables with some salt, some pepper, and then it's time to add in the vegetable broth. I add in a lot more salt later on. This is just kind of to make sure that the vegetables get salted before the whole soup gets salted. I have two options, um, just regular vegetable broth, which uh, doesn't really matter which one you use. But also, if your store has this, there's this company that has the no chicken broth. And it's vegetarian, um, so I would suggest using this one for more flavor, but if your store doesn't have it, I usually will just use a vegetable broth. I kind of just pour it in until all of the vegetables are covered. It looks like one box would do the trick, but I think I might add just like one more cup. So now we get to the fun part. I'm just gonna turn this up a little bit. Turn it back to high, I had it a little low. My favorite things ever are the not chicken bouillon, bouillon cubes. So the, this is like, especially if you don't have the no chicken broth, these are like, these are like the secret ingredient of my soup. Um, these are so good, so delicious. So I use about four cubes, but I'm gonna add those, the milk and the nutritional yeast and then all the spices, so let's get to it, guys. And just take off the wrapping, pop them in there. So, I'm gonna do a half of a So, any good chowder or soup, um, I feel like, all of my favorite soups growing up had a ton of butter. This is probably the most unhealthiest part of the soup, but it is just a bunch of oils. It's vegetable oil, canola oil, sa safflower oil, flax oil, olive oil, water. But we're gonna put a ton of butter in here. Oh my lordy, it went flying. Landed right on the lid though. Clump of butter. Mmm, so delicious. 
Now we're gonna get out our handy dandy immersion blender. You wanna make sure that you don't make it too um, soupy. Like you wanna make sure you leave a little bit of like chunks. Um, I'll show you. Pretty much everything is blended up, except for a few things. So now we're gonna add nutritional yeast, the best. And this is what's gonna give it that cheesy flavor. Jeez. Probably add uh, just a half cup of nutritional yeast. together. So a lot more salt, some ground cumin. Cumin. We're gonna add oregano, parsley, can't forget our onion powder because we don't have any onion. Then we're gonna add some thyme, some organic rosemary, some basil. So I'm gonna turn that back to high, let that boil for a little bit, and uh, let it thicken a little bit. But I'm gonna do a little taste test here. Don't burn yourself, people. It's like 98% perfect. It just needs some more salt. It's weird because you feel like I feel, I feel like I put enough salt. So I am just being verbal and conscious about the waste that I produced while making this meal. This is the recycle from the meal. I'm gonna be able to recycle all of these things. And then this is uh, the waste from the food. So like the extra pieces. This will all be going into our compost box, which is outside. But I think it's just important, you know, to be conscious and aware of the waste that we're producing. My absolute favorite way to eat this soup is with a bunch of freshly ground black pepper and some saltines. These are the just, I think they're just organic wheat saltine crackers, but just my favorite way to eat it. Any soup basically, but so, so yummy. You could also make garlic bread or just toast um, or like the little oyster crackers, all really great. But yeah, it's so delicious. Ugh, guys, so good. I hope that some of you guys try this out. Um, it's a great way to reduce waste um, and get rid of all the things that are about to go bad in your fridge. But also, it, this would be just really great to make, you know, without using leftover vegetables. You could just go out and buy vegetables specifically for this soup. It's that good. It's so good. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you want more, you know, cooking videos because I love to cook and I have so many good recipes. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will, uh, I'm like crouch down in this video. I will see you guys next time. I'm going to enjoy my soup before the girls wake up. Stay rad, stay weird, stay beautiful. Bye guys, love you. You are the cutest little cracker eater in the whole world. <laughs> Rosie's gonna finish her soup. Rosie just had some soup. And over here, 
We have a jar of it at the top. A jar of it to take over to Jairus. He's making some music right now. Mm, 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 mm. And I just put the rest of it in another mason jar and put it in the fridge. So delicious. Every freaking time I need a new freaking tripod.